opportunities where we could add life around throughout the world. Yeah, I mean, I I, use, I call it retro tinted spectacles. When you remember a game, but then when you go back and play it, you're like, oh, Ooh, we yeah, actually, that, did that was because the old Spyro games were really, they were big, right. like yes. the first like 3D open world. Mm -hmm. But if you go back, it's kind of empty. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> empty. So you have some really crazy tech to make these games. Can you talk about that? Yeah, totally. Um, so we did not have source code to build it from, <laughs> and our engineers spent some time building a thing that they called Spyroscope essentially Spyro under a microscope. But what that really means is, how do we make sure these jumps here are the right height? And when you have the controller in your hands, if you played it 20 years ago, you have that muscle memory. You're like, right. oh my god, this is exactly how he's supposed to run and fly. And that's totally where I'd bonk my And you ran yeah. into a wall. No, totally. Uh, <laughs> but we wanted to make sure we were paying the right amount of respect to that. So people who have that deep-seated memory, they're still going to be able to feel that again here. And that's, that's part of the joy that we've had, too, is just being able to explore that and watch me die by sleeping. Watch dogs. you die. Yeah. <laughs> so when you were making remaking these three games, what were some of the other things that was really, really important to get right for this franchise? Um, so the art and the gameplay, like the muscle memory, really led the way. And we had opportunities like in here. This is uh, Nevin's castle. And so Nevin, as I die again, <laughs> he was, um, we wanted to really emphasize the artisans. So this is the first area of the first game. All the dragons that have been turned to crystal are now uh, well, they were artisans. So we have like a painter, sculptor, a barista. Yeah. <laughs> it's all over the place. But it was a, a fun opportunity to just start building those worlds. And so if you look around here as I'm trying to avoid the dogs, there are all the places that Nevin would visit, some of his friends. He has a self-portrait in there. <laughs> and it's just little touches that make the world feel alive. Stay away from me, dog. It's awesome, but even look at the reflection on the floor when you're running. Yeah. Like that's what, that's right. what you can do now. That's what graphics let us do. Yeah. It was just a whole bunch of freedom to tell a story while still respecting the original story. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's been super fun. Uh, it's even been to the point where we have a number of people at the studio. Oh, of course. A number of the people at the studio are like super fans. Uh -huh. So we were able to engage them about, hey, is this sleeping dog big enough? Is this shepherd really menacing enough with how he's animating? Like, what kind of things do we need to do to make this feel the way that you felt when you were a kid you playing kidding? it? Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make sure that we're respecting not just the original rules of the game, but the way the feelings came about with people. Yeah. Also, the sound design was very important. Can you talk about sound a little bit? Yeah. Voice actors? Uh, it's sort of hard to hear in here, but we did some elements all over the place in the sound. Uh, we tried to make it so that it's more dynamic. When you're inside of an interior, the sound will dim a little bit and okay. sort of give you an ambience and a sense of place. Versus if you go to fight a boss, you're going to have extra layers of audio coming in with additional instrumentation oh, and more percussion. Um, even with that, we added percussion to the steps as you're running around so that you have more of a sense of what it's like being a dragon. I mean, there's going to be a whole generation of people who will only know Spyro yes. from the Toys to Life Spyro. Like, they won't. This will be their first yeah, time. Yeah, this will be their first people time playing I all these games. This is like, we like to think of this as a totally separate beast from uh, Skylanders, which is yeah. cool. Because like, that this was the foundation that gave us inspiration to uh, Skylanders in the first place. But we want to make sure that this is done justice the right way. Uh, yeah. The fans have really been outpouring their support with how much they like the original character and want to make sure that we're doing him right. And so that's totally on the forefront of everyone at Toys for Bob's mind. Now, since we're going to go see one of the dragons, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna it's a good right time there. to mention the voice actors. Yeah, totally. Um, so the voice of Spyro in the second and third games was Tom Kenny. Okay. And since we're doing the trilogy, we wanted to unite them. So he's doing all uh, three games. Worth oh, so he's Spyro voicing game. all three games. Yeah. Nice. But while we're here, let's see a dragon. Kevin! Hey, there we go. Didn't look that good Last 20 years ago. <laughs> put one of his <laughs> most yeah. devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on. I think I smell a barbecue. <laughs> Be careful, Spyro. Toasty has many tricks up his sleeve. Oh, that part gets me. Um, I love it because we're able to keep the same audio, like the spirit of the original audio, but then through a lot of the models, you're getting a lot more gesticulation in the acting there. So even like when Spyro is doing his little wiggle as he's jumping, it's just sort of like, oh, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. So here is Toasty. Ah. <laughs> I swear I did better yesterday. We were talking about this yesterday. <laughs> you were like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. 
So Toasty is actually a disgruntled sheep dressed up as a scarecrow. I'm gonna chase him because he's hilarious he when count. he runs. The noise, the pitter patter of the feet yeah, the just brings patter. back that memory to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are my favorite comments now. Oh my god, why did they just get someone who can play the game? Yep. They're like, dude, he's yeah, making it. Great. Like, he's made the game. Like, you make the game, you should be an expert at it, right? Yep. Well, that's the lie that we always tell everyone. You should be I'm passionate. I'm an expert at dying. That's what's more important. So the Spyro series has a rabid, really active fan base. How has the fan reaction been so far? We've seen a lot, uh, a lot that we've loved too. People have been outpouring how they're feeling about the design of the characters, and it's just been sweet to see. Look uh, at Tasty. A lot of times, yeah. A lot of times, the studio will actually uh, look through some of the comments just as inspiration. Uh, nice. <laughs> it helps people feel like just super pumped to get through the rest. Yeah, your work is definitely appreciated. Yeah, get rid of the ads, and then we can just there concentrate. There we go. Right. Get there eventually. You did it! <laughs> so yeah. This is just a brief taste of the Spyro Reignited trilogy. So since we have a few minutes, do you yes. think you could show us the uh, the time attack? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course. Uh, I was very lucky I actually got to see Spyro yesterday, as we mentioned. Uh, you did the demo of this time attack level for us, and you did a really, really good time. You did 1 minute 40. <sighs> no yeah. pressure. Which yeah. knocked 10 seconds it off had. the best time before it was, you. It was pretty so good. So when we were chatting, I was like, I'm going to ask you to come and do this on the stage, Live. and I want to see if you can beat your own time. <laughs> so we're looking for a 1 minute 40. The, the piece you missed is someone got to 128 yesterday <gasps> at the what? end of the day. Yeah, it was awesome. It wasn't. Okay, we're not aiming. I'm not going to make you do a I'm 128. Aim for the 140. We'll do 140. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the time attack stuff always makes my palms sweat, so you did very, very well. Uh, Rob from PlayStation Access did this, and he got two minutes. So. Oh, yeah? Sweet. Uh, so, on this particular mode, so that you're concentrating, we, there are certain things we have to destroy, and you have to destroy all of them before the time runs out. If you do it successfully, it adds additional time so that we can keep flying. And that is the challenge. These planes are the bane of my existence in this level. You've got this. <laughs> Ramon's watching this like, yes. hell no. <laughs> He's like, hell. Not happening. Oh, looks like you're making good time. Uh, no, I gotta get that plane too. Go for those gates. The team is gonna be embarrassed by me. <laughs> there he is. I love that this is a good example of how big the world can be, too. Even as I know I'm about to lose. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yep. So close. You so close. Can. Next time. You could get it next time. Yep. So is there anything else you'd like to tell the fans out there about Spyro? Yeah, uh, the Spyro Reunited Trilogy is coming out September 21st. Uh, PlayStation and Xbox mm -hmm. and $39.99 in the States. I don't know the other uh, regions that well. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, thank you um, so yeah. much for showing and doing the game Thank you so much for the time. Really I really appreciate it. it. Thank you. Yay, I'm in my, back in my childhood again. Yeah. All right, that's it from us, but we'll be right back with more live from PlayStation at E3.